Oh, 
show me what it's like to see um, patience, patience, because my mom is, and this fight were very close, and they would talk for hours and hours, and um, I was also telling my aunt Jean out there, I said, when he was talking about how his daughters was up there, I was right along with him. I learned how many right there. Now, I might struggle sometimes, but I know some stuff. <laughs>
praise God. So when he was in the hospice, I, the Lord troubled my spirit. Jesus. He troubled my spirit. And I had a dream. And when I when I woke up, I was singing to him. I was singing to him. In my dream, and when I woke up, I was singing. And the Lord said, go over there and sing to him. So I, I didn't want to delay. I heard him. I went over there. And I just started singing to him. Praise the Lord. And talking to him about God. Praise the Lord. And all of a sudden, his hands started growing.
received it the other night. So we're going to light it. Glory to God. Speaker, glory to God. And you know the Lord, he'll, he'll bless us. He'll, he'll bless us. And we're going to yeah. take care of it tonight. Glory to God. We're going to put it all together, glory to God. And, and uh, we're going to see how the Lord works in the name of the Lord. All right? Glory to God. So we're going to get it together. Get it? We're going to see how still dig it. I'm going to get $50 again. Speaks off. Glory to God. The cash out for uh, the expense for the speaker's offer is G T C O G I C. If you want to cash out, G T. C O G I C S G is a George T is a Tom Kojic. Twenty five. I believe that's what it is. G T Kojic twenty five. That's the cash out. And Zell. And Z and if you want to um, cash out the speaker directly, First Lady Marlon Milton, what's what's the cash out? Cash or uh, dollar sign Voice of Power. That's Voice of Power. Voice of power, all in one word, lowercase. Voice. Yeah. Word of Daniel. Yeah.
here be that of Riley's, Pastor Damon Milton. It's your name. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise on tonight. Hallelujah. We come to worship Him.
Do you hear me? He had to work with his hands. He had to go without. Amen. He had to do some things that the normal man would not want to do. Why? Because there was a call on his life. And those of us that say God has called us, let's get ready to deal with everything that comes on this journey. Many of us sometimes we gotta we gotta trust it. Watch too much TV. Amen. We look at that what's the production that's going before us. Everything looks so beautiful on camera. Amen. Everybody's behaving in the audience. You see all the smiles and the grins. Everything seems to be so wonderful. Oh yeah. But 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 the camera don't catch the back door fights. The camera don't catch the business meeting. The camera don't catch the people that raise up dust. Now what are we talking to you? But I don't want all of my labor to be in vain. Paul tells us, get ready, got to prepare yourself because there's some things that we're going to have to go through. Yeah. But nevertheless, he tells them, but thanks be to God. Yeah. Give us, us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're going to deal with some things. Okay. But what you deal with, he says, be steadfast, uh -huh. unmovable, uh -huh. and always abounding yeah. in the work of the Lord. You gotta understand that it's going to be some days yeah. where you might feel like you're by yourself. Yeah. You might feel like you're out there on the canvas like the apostle John. Yeah. But you feel like, Lord, are you with me? Yeah. You called me, you told me to go, you said you you anointed me, yeah. you pulled me out, you picked me out, you chose me for a divine work. But sometimes things come against us. Oh, yes. Sometimes the enemy rises against us. Sometimes false brethren rise against us. Don't fool yourself. Everybody come to church, don't have the church down inside of them. Everybody come to church, God did not send them. They, we do have some demons running loose in the church. We do have some Jezebel spirits working around the church. Oh yeah. And we've got to put on the whole armor of God and prepare for the fight that is on our hands. And in this day and time in which we live, the devil is running rapid all over the place. The spirit of murder is running reckless. Look at our children just went back to school. And the boy come loose, run loose with a gun and shooting in the school. Look at the world that we live in. Drug addiction and all these different things. Fentanyl and all of the drugs flooding our community. And our children are committing suicide and shooting and killing one another. We live in, in an awful day. Paul tells Timothy, he said, you got to get ready for this because in this last day that you're coming through, he said, there are men are going to be lovers of their own self. They're going to be heady, hearty, high-minded. They're going to be full of pride and arrogance. All types of spirits are going to come against you, but be encouraged with this, that if the Lord be for you, who? Somebody ever say who? Can be against us. I don't want all of my labor to be in vain. Think about all that you are doing and have done in your walk with the Lord. Look at the time that you put in. Look at the, the things that you had to go through. Amen. Look at the times you ministered. Amen. And people weren't able to give you anything. Look at how you went to the rescue of people who could not, even some of them didn't even say thank you. Amen. There were times, and most of us, especially pastors, know that we go to the rescue of people that don't go to our church. Amen. They're not on our rolls. They don't give tithe. They don't give offer. They don't show up. But when a crisis happens, we get a call. I need you here. I need you there. I got a third or fourth cousin twice removed. I need you to go, and I need you to serve them. Y'all don't hear it. Uncompensated. Lord, have mercy of Jesus. But my brothers and my sisters, this is why you got to be sold out for God, because we're not in this for a paycheck. We're not in this for a big car. We're not in this for elevator shoes. We are in this because God has placed a divine call upon our life, and no matter what happens, if God be standing I know I'll make it all right. You have a witness. As I run hurriedly to 
my clothes. There's a old song that I used to hear the saints say that you don't hear them sing much now because we're in the day of the praise teams and the worship teams and all this other wrong with it. But this old congregational song said, put your time in. Hey, hey there. It's coming at the wild. Yeah, sometimes we forget that you got to put in your time. Amen. Sometimes we got young young people want to get in ministry, and overnight they want to be T.D. Jackson. Overnight they want to be Joel Osteen, and overnight they want to be whoever. But I want you to know that the only way you're going to be effective is to walk in the path that God has called you to. You've got to stir up the gift that's within you. You got to have a witness here. Y'all don't hear me talking. We got too many copycats. We got too many clones. We got too many people trying to do what they see the man and the woman on TV do. But we got to get before the Lord. We got to get in that prayer closet. We got to ask God to give us a means, a system, and a way to operate that will be effective in this day and time. Do I have a witness? I said, put your time in. You got to put in some time. Amen. Then you got to look at it like this. You don't go on a job and put in two weeks and all of a sudden you think you're ready for a benefit package. You got to at least work 90 days to get yourself all the way in there. But many of us want to work two weeks, work three weeks, and all of a sudden we want a vacation. What you mean vacation? You ain't work a month yet. Y'all don't hear me. You got to put your time in. Somebody else say put your time in. You got to put some sacrifices. You got to pay some dues. Amen. And we're in a day and time that nobody wants to pay dues. They want to be on the top. Y'all don't hear me. But you don't understand how many of people have worked from the bottom up. You will have a witness. My daddy took us to church. And it was a little old church in the neighborhood. Little old church over there on Leslie Street in Lansing, Michigan. And back in the day, they didn't have no vestibule. Y'all don't hear me talking to me. Little old church, one door in it. Go open the door and right in the church and look straight at the pulpit. And every in the wintertime, you open the door and the cold air will blow in. Y'all don't hear me. We sit in the church freezing cold. Sometimes we had to put our coats on. And every time a saint opened the door and came in, you got a draft from the cold outside. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me talking to you. We sat in the old theater chairs because we didn't have the plush chairs that you have now. We didn't have the plush views. Back then, we had to go phone chairs. You got stuck in them. Y'all don't hear me. But look what the Lord has brought us from. Yes, yes, yes. God, God, God is trying to get us to understand that ministry is not about what you can get. Ministry is about how much you can keep. Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. Y'all don't hear me. And this is what God is calling for in a day like today. Stop trying to be a big shot. Stop trying to be the next big thing. But if you hit your knees and ask God, Lord, anoint me. Empower me. Give me what y'all no, won't give me. Give the Lord up here somebody. All right. Be steadfast. When the storms come, be steadfast. When the people don't call your name, be steadfast. When you don't get an offering, be steadfast. Y'all don't hear me talking. Oh, my God. People now get upset when you don't call them by their proper title. But let me tell you something. The highest title you can have is a saint. If you are called by God, y'all don't hear me. We're called to be saved. And look, I respect your office. I respect your title. That's not it. But your title will wind up putting you in hell. If you ain't careful with your attitude, if you ain't careful with how you talk to people, if you ain't careful how you treat the people of God. Jesus said, if you treat the little one, the least is one, he said, it's better for a millstone chain around your neck and cast you in the depths of the sea. We ain't got what's called big shite ice. We're stuck with a virus that infected us. We are so stuck on ourselves. If somebody don't recognize me, if I don't have the right seat, I'm about to throw a raging fit. But God wants you to humble yourself. Because if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he declares I'll exalt you in new time. It don't matter who don't want to see you come up. The God I serve will pick you up from the bottom of the bed. And he'll bring you up in a seat of glory. So what? They don't call your name. So what? They don't recognize you. The God I serve will recognize me. I got to close now. Now I close here. Paul told Timothy. 